The outcome of the Lok Sabha elections that will be known on the 4th of June would be influenced greatly by what happens in the largest states in India. Let's start with the largest state, Uttar Pradesh. It has 80 members of parliament. Uttar Pradesh is India's biggest state. It has one out of six Indians live in Uttar Pradesh. If Uttar Pradesh was, a sec was an independent country, it would be the sixth most populous country on the world after the People's Republic of China, India, Indonesia, Brazil, and the United States. There are more people in Uttar Pradesh than in Pakistan. Be that as it may, Uttar Pradesh has going to have a huge influence because out of the 80 seats that the NDA, the Bharatiya Janata Party, and its ally, the Apna Dal, got in 2019, they got 64 out of 80. In 2014, five years earlier, the BJP and the NDA's numbers was higher. The BJP got 71 and the NDA got 73. The question is, will it increase its tally in 2014, uh, sorry, 2024? Will it remain where it is? Will it come down? I think the important factors to note are A, the Bahujan Samaj Party, which in alliance with the Samajwadi Party had got 10 Lok Sabha seats in 2019. Those people are no longer with the BJP, some have been expelled, some are no longer there. But the Bahujan Samaj Party, the symbol of the elephant and its leader, Ms. Mahavati, who's, who's not been campaigning. But a certain proportion of the vote, the Dalit vote, and within the Dalit community, the Jatav community are always been solidly behind her. The kind of candidates we, she's put up, we'll have to wait and watch. But there is a view that the BSP and the elephant symbol, its voters could hurt the interests of the non-BJP political parties. That is the Samajwadi Party and the Congress, which is in alliance fighting together. Now, we don't know where, what will happen to these 10 seats. Will they go with the BJP and the NDA? In which case, the BJP's numbers would go up. If it does not, if the Dalits vote differently than what many people expect, then the gainer would be the Samajwadi Party and the Congress Party. But we'll have to wait and watch. Again, we get two extreme views. If you're a supporter of the BJP and the NDA, you will say, look, Ram Mandir is there under Yogi Adityanath. Law and order has been, you know, very good. And therefore, why? Well, we will do better than what we did in 2014. So out of 80, we'll get almost all the seats. I mean, that's what they'll claim. That's what is said, you know, depending on if you're a supporter of the party. But let's assume that they get what they got in 2014, the NDA. That means a gain of 10 seats. Let's move on. Those who do not support the NDA, those who are opposed to the NDA, they'll say the NDA's numbers might come down. Somebody says it's come down to 50. Others say it'll come down to 60. It's right now at 64. Or it'll, if, if at all it goes up, it'll go up a little bit, not too much. Again, we have to wait and watch. But sure, since Uttar Pradesh has 80 Lok Sabha seats, the outcome of uh, the elections, uh, the, of those 80 seats will have an important bearing on the elections in, and the outcome in, in Delhi, in, in, in national politics. Let's look at the second largest state in India in terms of Lok Sabha seats and that is Maharashtra. Maharashtra, ha, out of the 48 seats, the old NDA, that is the Bharatiya Janata Party and the Shiv Sena, which was at that time united. They got 41 out of the 48 seats. With the Shiv Sena getting 18 and the BJP getting 23. There was one MP, that is the AIMIM party, and one independent who subsequently went to the BJP. That means you're left 41 plus 2, 43. You're left with 5. Five 
the 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 undivided nationalist congress party under sharad pawar the ncp got 5 and the congress got 1 now the question is very very difficult to predict because the shiv sena is in two parts and the shiv sena under uddhav thakre that the shiv sena ubt the ncp is also split that the ncp headed by sharad pawar and the congress comprising what is called mva the maha vikas agadi how they will perform it's a very difficult question to answer as ms mahavati and the bahujan samaj party have an influence in among the dalit community in uttar pradesh in maharashtra prakash ambedkar member of parliament his followers also influence the outcome of the vote but we are not clear again the dalits as in up whether in up whether they will vote blindly in up the elephant in maharashtra for the party headed by prakash ambedkar that is the um, vanchit bahujan vanchit bahujan agadi bva sorry vanchit bahujan agadi i got that suppose they don't then the outcome would be different because i believe that out of those 48 seats in madhya pradesh in at least 6 perhaps 8 the dalit vote will make a big difference but we should not underestimate the shiv sena led by uddhav thakre remember the stronghold of the the shiv sena is in mumbai and greater mumbai india's financial capital entertainment capital and we've seen how the situation has been so managed or i would say manipulated that elections have not been held to the bmc the bmc is the brihan mumbai municipal corporation which is the biggest corporation of its kind in asia they have an annual budget of 50000 crore plus i mean many small states in northeast india I mean, all the union territories don't have such a big budget now we'll have to wait and watch suppose hypothetical purely hypothetically instead of 5 the mva now gets 15 out of 48 the nda is still very powerful we are assuming that the dalits have not voted tactically and therefore the mva has lost hypothetically if the nda gains say 10 in 2019 from 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 where it was in 2019 in 2024 then it would have compensated for the gain in 10 seats in uttar pradesh to the nda net zero why then do i still believe that the bharatiya janata party's number will come down from 303 let's take the third largest state which is bengal the trinamool congress out of i mean, I mean there, there is 42 lok sabha seats in bengal the trinamool has So the Mool Congress has 22, the Congress has two, and the remaining 18 are with the BJP. They got 40% of the vote. The BJP got 40% of the vote in 2019. Now, once again, we don't know how the traditional followers of the left and the Congress will vote. According to that, the BJP's number may go up or come down. But my personal view, this is a personal view as a Bengali, is that Beng Bengal will be. ready yeah let's come to west bengal is in terms of lok sabha seats is the third largest in the country uttar pradesh has 80 seats maharashtra has 48 bengal has 42 in 2019 the bharatiya janata party the bjp then 18 lok sabha seats in bengal the highest ever they had a vote share of around 40% the th the trinamool congress headed by chief minister mamata banerjee they got about they got not about they got 22 the bjp got 18 and the congress got two will there be a change this time that's a difficult question to answer my personal view as a bengali is that the, the changes may not be very significant if the bjp gains it will gain by two 
unlike what the BJP itself says. The BJP says we will do very well. If it loses, as the Trinamool guys are saying, I don't think it will lose significantly to come down to a single digit. But you know the people of this country surprise all of us. We who sit here pretend to be pundits, we actually know nothing. But there are two or three points which are significant. A first point is that in Bengal, after Assam, as per the 2011 census, this is the highest the highest proportion of the population are Muslims. According to the 2011 census, it's around 27%. Assam is 33%. Jammu and Kashmir used to be higher, but Jammu and Kashmir is no longer a state. So in Bengal, the Muslim vote, how tactical will the Muslim vote be? I believe it would be. They would, I believe the Muslims will not vote for the BJP. They may vote for the Congress, in certain constituencies. In the middle of West Bengal, we have Adiranjan Chaudhary's constituency. We have the constituencies called Malda, which are, you know, Ghani Khan Chaudhary, the former union minister. His family is very, very is powerful over there. One other thing that matters a lot as far as Bengal is concerned, the women of Bengal. I would say that it's true in other states also, but I would certainly say it's true for Bengal. There are large numbers of families where the men and the women have voted differently. The father, the grandfather, the, the husband, the son, all may, may vote for one party. They may vote for the BJP, they may vote for the Congress, they may vote for the left. But the women have been strongly behind. Didi or Mamta Banerjee. And that's why, why do I say this? Because the Mamta, Mamta Banerjee is a, a unique political personality. She's not just the only woman Chief Minister of India. You can't, you can't compare her with important political leaders in the whole of South Asia. Give me, let me give you 10 names. Aung San Suu Kyi of Myanmar, Sheikh Hasina and Khalida Zia of Bangladesh, Benazir Bhutto of Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Sirima Bandar, Bandar Nayak, Chandrika Kumaratunga. Come to India, Indira Gandhi, Sonia Gandhi, Ms. Mayavati, Ms. Jayalalitha. All of them had males who supported them at some point of time. Mamta Banerjee says, she, I've risen on my own strength. Other than Rajiv Gandhi, who gave her a ticket to contest against Somna Chatterjee and she won. That's a strong point. We'll have to wait and watch and see what happens in Bengal. Let's move to the fourth largest state in India in terms of Lok Sabha seats. That's Bihar. Bihar has 40 Lok Sabha seats. In 2019, Nitish Kumar's party, the Janata Dal United, the Bharati Janata Party, together got 33. 16 to the JDU, 17 to the BJP, and six seats went to the Lok Jan Shakti Party, which had been founded by former Union Minister, the late Ram Vilas Paswan. One seat, one out of 40, went to the Congress. None went to the largest party in the state assembly, that's the RJD or the Rashtriya Janata Dal, headed by. Lalu Prasad Yadav's son, Tejashwi Yadav. Now he's putting up a spirited campaign. And my view is that the NDA will become weaker in Bihar. Time will tell how much Nitish and his party, his political image has been impacted by his Paltu Baba, by moving from one, one party to the other. In fact, Nitish Kumar is the only citizen of India mm who has been sworn in as chief minister of a state no less than 10 times. It's unique. No citizen of India. So I believe that the NDA will become weak in Bihar. I also believe that the BJP will become weak in Karnataka. They have 28 seats. In 2019, the Congress got one. The JDS got one and the remaining seats, that's 26, went to the BJP. Now the Congress is in power in Karnataka. You're all aware, your viewers are all aware of the scandal concerning Rivana. I have a feeling, I can't say how much, 
But I do expect the Congress to gain in Karnataka in a significant manner. I think the Bharatiya Janata Party has maxed in several states where it can't get more. In Madhya Pradesh, it has all but one seat. In Chhattisgarh, it has all but two seats. Rajasthan, it has 25 out of 25. I believe the BJP and the NDA would lose a few seats in Rajasthan. Gujarat, BJP has got all the seats, fine. I think they'll get it again. Delhi, the BJP is 7 out of 7. Haryana, 10 out of 10. I expect that in Rajasthan, in Haryana, in Delhi, and in Punjab. Punjab, the Shiromani Akali Dal is not what it used to be. Though it was formerly a part of the NDA, right now because of the farmers' agitation, we do not know where it stands. And, and I'm not so sure without the Shiromani Akali Dal support, the BJP would be able to get the seats it got. Uh, the BJP had two seats and the NDA had two. So, all these states I see the BJP losing and the NDA losing, which is why I have argued and I continue to believe that it will be difficult for the BJP to get 303 out of the 543 members of the Lok Sabha and it would be next to impossible or impossible for the NDA to cross that 400 mark. I think both the BJP and the NDA would become weaker. How much weaker? I don't know. We can speak on the, 40, on the 4th of June. I'm not an astrologer. I pretend to be a political analyst. Thank you very much for speaking to me and I wish all the viewers of Maktoub Media all the very best. Namaskar.